Hello everyone and welcome to today's reading of The Supernatural. Today's chapter, The Superhumans. There are a few individuals who claim to perform feats which would be impossible for most of us. Very often their claims are supported by careful investigation. Even so, scientists still dismiss their behavior as trickery or exaggeration. However, there is increasing evidence that some people can defy the laws of nature. Possibly the most amazing form of unusual behavior is the ability to fly, or levitation as it is known. The young Italian monk who levitated at mass in Copertino was a simple peasant boy named Joseph. Born in 1603, Joseph was deeply religious and became a monk at the age of 22. Whenever he became excited, particularly when at prayer, Joseph would float upwards. Many hardly respected people, including noblemen and Pope Urban VIII, witnessed his flights. Joseph's sincere religious beliefs were given as the reason for his remarkable gift. After his death, Joseph was created a saint. In the late 1800s, another man achieved fame through his ability to float through the air. Douglas Holm mixed with important people in Britain and was always happy to show his peculiar skills. He could cause musical instruments to play without touching them and could create winds. But most spectacular was his gift of flight. Home often floated through the air, drifting in and out of windows at will. He continued to do this for 25 years from 1855 onwards. Though often investigated by scientists, Home was never shown to be cheating or using hidden machinery. More recent examples of levitation come from India and China. In 1936, a group of Europeans watched an Indian holy man float above the ground. Many European travelers to Tibet in China have reported seeing holy men flying through the air. Another unusual activity performed by Indian holy men is fire rocking. This was first seen in 1912 in India, but today it is most common on Pacific Islands such as Fiji and Bali. Usually a pit is dug and filled with wood and stones. The wood is then set on fire and allowed to burn until it is reduced to white hot embers. The embers are then raked off, leaving the stones at a temperature of about 500 Celsius. The firewalkers then stroll across the stones as if they were quite cool. Researchers who have investigated fire walking have noticed several features. No trickery in the form of shoes or other protection can be found. However, most fire walkers spend many hours, sometimes days, preparing themselves. They pray, fast, and meditate for long periods of time. It has been suggested that the walkers are in some kind of trance, but this does not explain why they are not burnt by the hot stones. Some people seem naturally immune to fire. One such man was Nathan Coker, an American blacksmith of the last century. He was able to pick up red-hot pieces of iron straight from the fire without burning his hands. More shocking for those who meet them are the people who seem highly charged with electricity. In 1952, for instance, a Welshman named Brian Williams found he could cause an electric light bulb to glow simply by stroking it with his hand. Less useful was the gift of Brian Clements. For a time in 1967, he found that he gave electric shocks to anybody who touched him. 
Other people have been known to be magnetic. In 1890, Lewis Hamburger found that pins, pen nibs, and other metal objects stuck to his hands. A stronger attraction was generated by Mrs. Timmer, who in 1938 showed she could lift cutlery and fairly heavy pieces of metal simply by touching them with her fingers. But, perhaps the most astonishing of all the superhuman gifts is the one which enables life to continue when starved of air. The gift has been claimed by many Indian holy men, one of the earliest of whom was named Hadridas. In 1835, Hadridas agreed to a test. He spent many days fasting and preparing for the ordeal. Then Hadridas sat down, closed his eyes, and stopped breathing. His pulse also ceased. He was then placed in a chest and buried. Guards were placed around the spot to ensure no trickery was involved. More than a month later, Hadridas was dug up. Within seconds, he was on his feet and asking for a meal. Most of these stories of extraordinary human behavior are not taken seriously. It is said that either the whole thing was a trick, or that the witness was exaggerating what had happened. This explanation would be believable if only one or two examples of levitation or fire walking existed. However, dozens of witnesses claim to have seen such events. Perhaps some humans are able to achieve what seems impossible. So, what do you all think? I'm not entirely sure, but I think it's all strange, but these things happen, don't they? Yes, that they do. It is certainly mysterious. That's all for today. I'll see you next time.